Amen. Let I want to say uh, good morning to the church, the members of the body, those who have taken time to tune in and view us this morning on live stream. We certainly are grateful that you took time out of your busy schedule. Uh, we, I guess we can all agree that this has been an unusual week in the United States of America. The coronavirus is real. It's serious, and the United States has escalated its numbers and have the highest confirmed cases, and we're leading in death as well. And so we took this time this morning to come back. This is unusual for us because I would prefer to meet the body of Christ in this worship place where I can smile and shake hands and hug, but because of the virus, we got to separate ourselves. And so these are unusual times that we're going through. And, 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 and because it's unusual, not just because we're not able to come here, but even in our personal lives, in our homes, on our jobs, many folk have, uh, are working from home. Many folk have not been able to go to work, and the government constantly telling us, to lock down, isolate. So these are some unusual times. And what we need is some stability. I had Brother uh, Elder Crosby to read from Luke about the discourse there of the disciples and Jesus, but, 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 but because of time constraints, we will not utilize all of that text this morning to develop our thought. But, but I would love for you, if you have your Bibles with you, to turn with me uh, to Philippians chapter 4. Uh, but there's something here that I think can help us during these unusual times and try to put a little stability. Things are happening. So many people are unsure about what's going on. Many Christians are unsure. Uh, but but we, we serve a big God. And we ought to be able to uh, latch on to his peace uh, Paul says in, in, in the Philippians chapter 4 and, and verse 4, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Now, I will admit, with so many things uncertain today, with so many unassurances going on in life, with so many things happening with the, the seriousness of this virus and all of those and many of us uh, uh, some of us have lost co-workers and loved ones but but with so many things Paul still takes the stand that the church or members of the body of Christ can rejoice in the Lord and he said always and again I say rejoice this coming from a man who is unsure about his own life who is being in, who's incarcerated, waiting for trial, don't know which direction. That doesn't that sound like we, we're waiting today. We don't know which direction this virus is going to go, but we have to trust in the Lord. And not only trust in him, but we can understand it and, and extract from God the peace of God. Peace. So how is your peace this morning? How is your peace? All this uncertainty, things shaking, our inner peace is uh, even in our personal homes. How is your peace this morning? People are looking for assurance. Some are looking for peace of mind that they can hold on to. Just anything with some stability. So how is your peace? Well, what we have to hold on is the peace of God. That, that, that gives us assurance. I want to tell you, when people lose hope, when people have their peace has been shaken, a lot of things happen in their heart. Their attitudes change. They feel insecure, angry. But Paul said, we are to rejoice. And Paul says in the, in the fifth verse of that text, he said, and let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And then he says, be careful for nothing. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Here's the part that gives us, here's the part, your take-home message for you folks viewing it. He says, and this is what, and, and, and the peace of God, are you on the line? And the peace of God, which passeth some understanding, all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. And so that's where we are to be this morning. We need Jesus in times like this. We need Jesus. In these unshakable times, unusual times, unique times, going through, the, we need Jesus. Amen. And for a few minutes this morning, I want to show, share it with you, how we need the peace of God, how we need his peace. And only the peace we can possess through, from God is through Jesus Christ. A couple of quick things, and we're going to uh, just conclude. But I do want to give you something to stand on, something to trust in, something to give you hope, to raise your level of expectation that God can do all that he promised to do. You and I this morning are standing on his promises but we need to enjoy his peace. That gives us comfort. We can't remove the coronavirus, but the comf God can give us comfort and peace through this time. So we need the peace of God. We, we, we need him. God is, and, and, and somebody said, how, how can we need to? God is identified as peace. He's the God of peace. Paul speaks very heavily of, of God being the God of peace in Romans chapter 15. Verse 33, Paul said, Now the God of peace, the God of peace can do anything if you will allow him, if you will trust him, if you'll obey his son, the God of peace can steal you right where you are even in these times. Not, not, not some, there, there's no magical wand. I wish I could tell you that tomorrow the virus is going to end. But I can't tell you that. But what I can tell you, whether it ends tomorrow or not, God is still in charge. And his peace will extend to protect you and comfort you during these times. God is the source of peace. He doesn't run out. You'll always be with us. Even when we don't understand, even when we confuse, even when we're not assured. God is our source of peace. And we can uh, contact that source through his son Jesus. In Romans chapter 5, Paul again speaking to the church there uh, in, in Romans and trying to encourage us, we need this encouragement. Paul said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That, that, this is what some folks are missing, unfortunately. If you want God's peace, you've got to be in Christ. No peace on the outside. All peace in Christ. He said, being justified by faith. I like those two words, justified. God has justified us. In other words, that's his grace. God didn't give us what we deserve, but God justified us. He made things right even when they weren't right. When we obeyed Christ, God made things right in life, and that's how we can receive his peace. Notice he said and we get the peace through Christ. Through Jesus. And every one of us viewing this this morning know that we want peace. Amen. We can't remove the virus, 
But what we need is God's peace while we go through the night. Paul says, by whom also, not only Jesus Christ, he said, by whom also we have access in faith into grace. He said, wherein we stand. And you know why, why Paul can make that that's applicable to us today? He said, for grace, wherein we stand. Man, grace, is, that, that's God's grace gives us what, what we don't deserve. God is treating us better than we deserve. He says, wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope. He said, and not only so, but we can glory in tribulation. Also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. I bet you the whole world can say amen now. Since this old virus has been around and you can't do anything about but wait on the Lord. Two things. You can wait on the Lord and you can trust in him. But you can't change it. You cannot change it. And, and so I, I want to encourage you this morning that God's peace is where we need to be. Not, not, not trusting in us. Not trusting in our money. But trusting in our source. And God's peace, not only God's peace can guard us. Every one of us need God's peace to guard. Turn with me if you have your Bibles. And I, I, I pray that you do because I like for us to follow along so that we can kind of keep up where we are. I, I want to go back to Philippians chapter 4. Back to Philippians chapter 4. And let's take a look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. We were just there. He says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through this. See, what, what, what's happening is, and, and I, I heard... I won't go into that. But 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 when you can stay your mind on Christ, things that are beyond your control, just trust them. We we our minds need to be settled during these difficult times. And Paul said, and he can stay. He said, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ. In other words, you he's our stabilizer. He's stabilizing situations. He, he, he's, he can put at bay or keep at bay our anxieties. Which some of them say, oh, there's going to be a God can't. No, no, no. That ain't gonna be. You trust God. You see what Paul says here in 7? He said, and the peace of God which shall pass all understanding shall keep, shall keep. That stabilizes your heart, and your mind through Christ. All we need is Jesus. Trust in him and obey him. And not only that. Uh, and, and then Jesus makes, he makes our peace possible. He, he'll make this possible. You may feel like, well, uh, a minister called me, I, I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm trying, and I, how, how do I know if God loves me? Uh, how can I get closer to God? Let me tell you, uh, Jesus has made all this possible. In Ephesians chapter 1, he said, All spiritual blessings are in Christ. And he made this possible, justifying you to be able to be accepted of that when we obey him. When we obey the Lord, when we obey Jesus, when we obey his word, we accept him, and we're baptized into him, Jesus makes this possible. We can enjoy those spiritual blessings. We can enjoy those and help protect us during these times that we are experiencing right now in life. Now, don't get me wrong. The times are real, but we serve a real God that can do anything but fail. And that, that's what we need to be trusting that. We don't, we don't need to be trusting in ourselves and in our money. So that's running short now. But the Lord is still good to us. And so we need to trust in him. He's still good to us. And we need to be close to him and just keep trusting in him and not trusting 
in ourselves. Not only did Jesus, are, are we justified, but, but the key to us getting closer to God and enjoying his peace, Paul mentions in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verse 18, God has reconciled us to himself by Jesus. Reconciliation would not, not even be possible without us going back to going through Christ to get to God. We've been reconciled. You know what that means? We've been brought back to peace. We've been brought back to peace. Those, those things are important, especially in times like now. We, we, those things that we can always depend and stand on. Think, just think that. I've been brought back to God. I can trust in him. I can get near him. And because I serve him, because I am a son of God, I can be protected from him. Uncertain times, they're real. But don't let them shake your faith. Don't let them overcome you. Don't let them knock you down. Don't let them uh, impede your ability to serve. Continue to serve and trust in the Lord. Solomon said, trust in him with all your heart and lean not on your understanding, and he will direct your path. That's what we need now. That's, that's what we need. That, that's the realistic. That's, that, that's real. That's what we need the Lord to continue to direct our past. Not, 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 not alcohol, not frustration, not drugs, not, not any of those things. But we need God's grace and we need his peace. Let me read this passage to you that I hope that will encourage you this, this morning. Taken from Second Peter. If you have your Bible, I welcome you to turn there. And I tried my best to help you to uh, with, stay with this through God's word that it's not going to help you. In Second Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse number 2, good lessons to read during this time. The Apostle Peter, he says, Grace and peace be multiplied. Now, all of us are intelligent folk. Multiplication is more than it was before you began. Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through, and here's how I'm, I'm told you this earth. Here's how you get it. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. In other words, you need more peace, you learn more about God through. You trust in Jesus. You understand uh, the dynamic role that he played in bringing salvation to us. He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Watch. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge. Knowledge is reading and understanding and digesting what the scripture has to say. He said, through the knowledge of him that has called us from glory unto virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having, I love this, escaped the corruption that is in the world. So it's possible. It's possible this morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's possible this morning to have some peace during these difficult times that we're confronted with. And it starts by being in Christ. And so if you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, and you're not in the body of Christ, let me tell you what the scripture says about being in the body. There are folks say, all you got to do is do Let's be realistic with this this morning. This is real. If you want to be get in, be added to the body, the first thing we must do is hear God's word. Mark twelve twenty nine says, "Hear, O Israel, our Lord our God is one Lord." We got to hear God's word, and then once we hear what God has to say, not what we feel like we already know, hear what God has said, then we must believe it. Romans 10, 17, says, so then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And after we 
can hear that and want to believe. You know how you know how you believe. You can hear and not believe. I can tell you this ceiling is falling down this morning, and you hear me. But if you move, you believe. If you don't move, oh yeah, we we know it's gonna fall. You don't believe me. See, so when you hear, hearing does something to you. It automatically causes you to move to do something. When you hear God's word, we hear it, we believe. And then we must repent of our sins. Yes, we've been wrong. But the Lord is willing for us to come to him. He's made it possible, as I read earlier from Romans, he is the justifier of justification. And it all comes from God through Christ. And then we must I repent of our sins and we must put on Christ in baptism. Baptism is what puts one in Christ. When you rise from the water, you are a child of God in the body of Christ. And then you can call on the Lord. Not only that, through Christ, you can, will have the peace of God. Some folks say, well, I, well, I've been baptized. No, if you didn't hear right, you couldn't have been baptized right. Listen to Paul, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He says, God forbid. How can we that are dead to sin be living any longer therein? Know ye not, as so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. He says, therefore, we are buried with him. Goes on to make the analogy, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should rise to walk in a new life. You need a new life this morning. Look what we can turn to. And when we can we are not, not, not this night, we're just a child of God, a Christian that's been added to the body of Christ. When uh, I was reading in Jude, Jude chapter 1, verse 2, Jude was writing this, he, he said this is interesting. It was, it was important to me, it was diligent to me, to write about the common salvation. You know what common salvation is? This is to let you know about being in Christ and God giving his peace through Christ. Common, anything common is available to all of us the same way. Common salvation. And so Jude was talking about common salvation. And, and it's available the same way. So if he was talking about common salvation, every one of us, must do what every one of those biblical characters did to be saved. Nobody had a, a, a Christian experience. Uh, you, you, you can't. What they did is they heard God's word. They believed it. They repented of their sins, and they were baptized for the remission of sins in, in water, contacting the blood of Jesus, which washed away their sins. That's the common salvation. So if you're listening, we pray that you will contact us. Uh, we, we'll be here this evening. Contact us if you're concerned about uh, having the peace of God and peace in Christ. Contact us. We're here. We're, we're, we're available to take your questions, to answer questions. Uh, you can contact us uh, through, through uh, our just come in personally. We're here in the office or by our phone numbers. And uh, we'll be happy to spend some time with you to teach you what God's Word say to our members. We want to encourage you to hold on. Don't give out. The fight is not up. We will reap, according to Paul in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, if we faint not. God bless you. Thank you so much. We pray that the Lord will continue to be with you. Will you pray with me? And Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this day you give us, for the time that you allowed us to come together to serve you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray that you bless this service. Bless all of those who viewed and those who listened, those who were involved. And we pray, Father, that you continue to take care of our country. It's your will, Lord, and not ours, that you will uh, help us to overcome these obstacles, these things that are approaching us and offending our our faith. We pray that you bless us, keep us, and save us. In Jesus' name, we humbly ask it, because he is our Savior, he's our mediator. 
Let the church say, Amen. Hello, I'm Richard Coffey, Senior Minister of Sweetwater Church of Christ. I'm here with Minister uh, Peterson. I want to introduce him who's doing the pulpit preaching here for us. Okay. Hi, Brother Trevante Peterson again, minister here at Sweetwater Church of Christ. we just like to take this opportunity to thank you for visiting us. We pray that you were blessed by the worship services. And if by chance you have any questions, we pray that you reach out and contact us so that we can answer any biblical questions that you have. For any Bible question that you can bring, we'll be sure to give you a Bible answer. Remember, morning Bible class starts on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Worship service begins at 10. Afternoon service begins at 6 o'clock. And then midweek Bible study begins at 7. We pray that you come out at any given moment. Come out, worship with us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ, where the gospel is preached and the water is sweet. God bless you. God bless you.